Grep is a super popular Unix command line utility for searching plain text and files. You can use grep with just the command grep, in this case, a pattern or a word that you want to search against and a file that you want to search that word in. So in this case, we're going to be looking at some fake web server logs. So let's look for the delete method, a file that we want to look in. And we just have fake web server logs.txt in this case that I already have in this folder. And as you can see, grep is going to print out each and every line that has the word delete in it. In this case, all uppercase. Now, funny enough, this isn't the main way you're going to be see grep being used. The main way is taking the output of a previous file or a previous command like cat and then piping that to grep. So that works exactly the same way. You're just going to see this pattern a lot more. In this case, we can cat out that fake web server logs to pipe grep. And then in the same case, a pattern. In this case, we're looking for delete. This is going to output the same exact thing, but you'll just see this pattern a lot more in grep for reasons of just simplicity and use, because not everything is looking at an individual file. That being said, if we did want to look at multiple files, we can do that in grep. In this case, in this folder, I have a few different HTML files. If I clear the screen again and I grep in these HTML files, let's just say I want to find the div. I would hope our HTML has some divs, but we grep div and then a location for these files. Now we could list out these individual files. I know that there's two in here, but let's say we wanted to search all files in this directory, or in this case, all files with a given extension. We could do that by using star dot, and then in this case, HTML, if I can type. And there you can see it actually prints out all of the individual lines that sees the, the word div. And then it also prints out ahead of that line, which file it came from. So these top lines here all came from index.html. And these ones down here came from index2.html. Sometimes this isn't always helpful, right? Like we don't want to see each individual line, but let's say we just wanted to count how many are in each of these files. We can use the dash C command. And if we run that, then it's going to print to the screen each individual file that it searched through and the amount of times it counted that individual pattern that it matched. Now there's a few important flags that are super helpful here when getting started with grep. If we look at the same command, a super helpful flag here is the dash I, and this dash I is going to make grep case insensitive. By default, grep is case sensitive. So in this case, if I was to search these files for capital div and let's remove the I, it's not going to find anything. But if we add that I, it's going to search through all these files and find anything not matching case. Another helpful command here is the dash V. And this is actually going to do the same grep search. In this case, it's going to be case sensitive. So let's actually fix this back to the normal lowercase div. And this is actually going to print out every single line that is not matched. In this case, every line that doesn't have a div. There's a lot printed to the screen, so we can still use that dash C and let's just count. So in this case, index.html has 40 lines that don't have a div and index2.html has 40 as well. Another helpful flag that we can use is the dash X flag. And basically what this is going to do is match the whole line. Previously, when we were looking for divs, for example, it was looking anywhere in any individual line and just seeing if the three characters div were in it. But now if we wanted to match the whole line, we can do that with grep dash x. And in this case, in this HTML, we need to produce a string here that would be the whole line of an HTML document. And I know these HTML files is going to have a tag like that. So grep dash x for that flag to search the whole line. In this case, we're searching for the closing bracket for HTML or closing whatever that is in HTML. God, I'm showing my ignorance. And then in this case, we're going to still search through all of those HTML files to find it. The index.html, we have one line that's matched in index two, uh, we have one line as well. Similarly, but differently, sometimes you want to make sure that you're matching the whole word and not just a substring of a word. A good example of this is earlier we were looking for div. I know one of these HTML files has the the word IV in it, and I want to find that individual file. The problem is, is if we grep for the pattern IV in those individual HTML files, we're going to get every single time that it says div, even though we're just looking for the string IV. What we can do here is we can use the dash W flag. In this case, it's going to match the whole word for us and then in turn only print out the one line that we knew only had IV and not all the other patterns that IV was a part of a larger word like div or in this case JS deliver up here. Now, of course, you don't have to remember all these flags. It's just helpful to know the different capabilities grep has. You're probably only going to be use a few of these in your daily, you know, admin type troubleshooting tasks. Now, one that I used all the time, but I actually didn't know the flag for was grep 
dash E, and this is how you negate special characters. Let me show you where this is helpful. A common thing I do is I'll usually print out a man page, like we did in the LS off video, for example. Check that out above if you're interested. But if I was to look at the man page for LS off, I would type man LS off, and I know I want to look for the dash A command in this man page. So if I do man LS off, and then I want to search for the pattern dash A, the problem when I do this is it's going to pass the dash A into grep, and it's going to get confused because grep doesn't have the option dash a. How I've traditionally done this is I've added basically the end marker, or I've double added a double dash to grep here, and this is how it search man ls off actually find the dash a because it basically this double dash tells bash that no more flags are accepted for this command now i didn't even know until looking at the man pages today you can also do this with dash e and grep and you get the same results it's helpful especially because i use this all the time because i like searching for flags and man pages i may see a command on the internet where someone adds a flag to a tool that i've already used but i don't know what that flag actually does it's helpful to be able to search the man pages with that flag and not have grep think that that flag is for it. Kind of moving on to the last little bit of flag conversation here, and that is sometimes you don't want grep to just print the individual line that you are searched and found uh, to the screen, and you can actually have grep print the lines in front of, after, or around an individual match with the commands capital A, B, or C. A being after, B being before, and C being contained corralled. I don't know what C stands for, but those capital letters will help you. So an example here, if I wanted to grep those HTML files again, and in this case, I want to do an exact match or match for the whole word. And again, we want to find IV. And then let's just, let's just run this again and make sure that we're getting this one line of your IV specialists. Now, let's say I want to look at three lines in front of this. We can use the dash B for before a little confusing, sometimes I put A here, and then the amount of lines that we want to search. In this case, three, because we want to look and have Gret print out the three lines in front of this match. So here, it's going to print out the match, and then the three lines above it. Now, the same thing if we use A, A is going to print the three lines after it, and C is going to print both three lines in front and three lines after the individual match. This is super helpful. Sometimes you're like looking at logs that may not be all on one line. You know you can match an individual identifier on the first line, but the actual value you're looking for, let's say, is five lines later in the log structure. This was where grep and the after and before commands could be super helpful there. Okay, that was the basics of just using the basic subset tooling that is built into grep. Now, the other side that I want to talk very briefly about is the different patterns that you can run with grep or basically regular expression that you can use with the tool. Now, again, very basic just to get you up and running so you kind of understand some of the power you have here. Now, a good example of some of the limitations of not using a pattern is we're actually going to cat out this Docker file that I have in this, this folder right now. And if we look at this Docker file, let's say we just wanted to pull this from Nginx latest, right? We wanted to see some information about where the individual Docker file is getting pulled from. But what we don't want is this comment that says this pulls from Docker Hub. We just want this individual line. So if we run grep on this cat, right, and we grep just for that from, right, I'm going to we'll wrap these in quotes. We're going to get both those individual lines, right? We're going to get the comment and actual from nginx.latest. Now, one of the first things that would be helpful here is the pattern with the caret. And what this caret is going to say, or the, the up arrow, is going to say only match that are start of the line with the word from in this case. And now it's only going to print to the screen from Nginx latest. Now, interestingly enough, the other thing we can use here is the dollar sign. And this is basically how we only want to match things at the end of an individual file or individual line. So if we look at Let's say we want to find that last line, expose 80. In this case, we can use 80 and then the dollar sign. And there, it's only going to match expose 80. Helpfully, you can also chain these together if you wanted to, in this case, search caret the start of a line. And then this dot star is signifying anything in between. And then at the end of a line with this, uh, again, uh, closing bracket dollar sign. What this is now going to search for is any individual line that starts with the open sign and ends with the closing sign or the, you know, less than, greater than, you know what I'm talking about, the 
little alligators. So if we're searching an HTML file, it's only going to show us the lines that are inside a, a single element here. Another thing I do all the time with regex is matching boundaries, and you can do that with the backward slash B. Earlier when I did grep and I searched for IV, and let's say I search through all my HTML files in this individual folder. Like I mentioned earlier, right? It's going to show us all these individual divs. It doesn't show us the one line that's your IV specialist. Now you could search as W, but sometimes you want to define the start of an individual, let's say word or string. Uh, so you don't want to use W because you don't want to match the whole word. You just want to do the start of an individual one. You can do that again, putting in quotes with uh, backward slash B and then the string that you want to look for and then closing quote and again this is only going to match that IV because the IV starts here the individual boundary a good example of this is if I remove the V even uh, it's going to find a few other words in this case so we have is initiate scale in and also our IV so kind of to demonstrate uh, what this B uh, the backward slash B is doing. There's other funny things you can do with boundary as well to replace other strings. For example, let's say I wanted to check our fake access logs for 404s, but just the string 404. It's only going to show us the delineated uh, 404s here. If we didn't do this boundary again, we're going to get 404 that's a part of every single other string here. And as you can see on this line here, uh, we have 404 a part of 2404, right? Like this is a part of a larger string. Now, following up a bit more, looking at those access logs, something you may want to do is search for two different items, right? I want to look in these access logs and I want to find things that are 404 or 500. So you would do that with the pipe character. In this case, we want to search each and every line if it has 404 or 500 print to the screen. Here's where we get to a nuance of grep. So grep has multiple different types of regular expression you can run against this. The default is basic regular expression here. And basically one of the caveats with default regular expression is you have to escape all of the special characters. So in this case, we have to use a backslash here. And this is going to print to the screen screen all of the 400 404s and all of the 500s. Now, if we didn't want to escape all the special characters, we can use extended regex with the dash capital E. And in this case, we can remove that backslash and just run this again with the individual pipe. You can also specify ranges of things you want to look for. For example, let's say I wanted to find all 400 errors in general. It doesn't matter what type, if it's a 404 or 420 or 414, we want to find any of them. We can specify that with this little range of digits. So in this case, we're searching for four, uh, any digit from zero to nine and any digit from zero to nine. And here we go, it's going to print a whole bunch of 404s to the screen because that actually happened to be the only thing that was in here. But believe me when I say if there is a 421 in here, it would also show that as well. Again, we're just starting to touch the basics of regex here. There's a whole world. This video is not a regex video. But here's an example of kind of starting to get more complex. This command right now, this regex, is actually going to look through IP addresses that the first three octets have exactly three digits. And then the last octet has one, two, three digits. So let's look at how that's created. The zero to one, the zero dash, oh, sorry, the zero dash nine here, this matches exactly three digits that are three to nine. So this little curly brace behind it is saying we need three digits zero to nine. Then we have a weird syntax here where we actually have to escape the dot because the dot is special syntax, but we're escaping it. So basically, so here we have three digits, zero to nine dot. And then after this parentheses, we also have a three in this curly bracket saying we need that three times. Then we need digits zero to nine, one, two, three times. So basically what this is saying is print out all the IP addresses that the first three octets are three digits and the last octet is one digit two digits or three digits and again not going through all the syntax here just want to demonstrate that there's a lot of power here as we can see it prints out all the different ips that it is matched so that was a really basic intro to grep this is primarily how i use it it doesn't go into all the different details of regex but hopefully this is helpful to get you running and using a lot more of the power than you probably previously been using it thanks let me know if you have any questions and have a good day